If you're on the hunt for effective ELA, that's English language arts materials for your third to eighth grader, we're beyond that learn to read phase, then you're in the right place. If you're new here, I am Melissa, a homeschooling mom of four and online teacher. Today, I'm sharing our top five ELA resources that have really changed the way that we homeschool. Before we dive in, I want to make sure that you have liked this video, subscribed, and turn on the notification bell. That is a huge help to creators like me. Let's go ahead and dive on in. Today's rundown of my top five ELA tools for this age group is brought to you by today's video sponsor, beeducation.com. Studying a world language is an important pursuit for all learners, especially our younger learners. Don't just leave this to high school. Learning a new language has also been shown to improve cognitive skills like memory, problem solving, and critical thinking. Has your child expressed any interest in learning Korean? Korea is growing in the technological and cultural fields, and now is a great time to start learning the Korean language. Whether your learner has Korean heritage or is just interested in Korean culture, B Education can help make learning Korean really fun. B Education's Korean language teachers are all native Korean speakers and they have years of teaching experience. Their class sizes are intentionally kept small so that your child receives the personalized learning attention that they need. They offer a variety of group and private tutoring options to fit your schedule. And that they also have self-paced and pre-recorded classes that your learner can take from the comfort of your own home. No time crunches here. Beeducation.com's Korean language learning classes are fun and geared toward motivating your learner to continue their studies. All this includes reading, writing, speaking, and listening, and teaching Korean culture. Go ahead and check out their ongoing and semester classes for ages three on up to adults over at beeducation.com. That's beeducation.com. Thanks again for supporting our sponsors, and let's go ahead and get back to those ELA skills. Tool number one is your local library and the Libby app. Now, the Libby app is a free app that connects your local public library card with the app, and it gives you access to thousands of ebooks and audiobooks. Here's something I've learned. Audiobooks count as reading. It's a fantastic way to get your students thinking about the pronunciation of these bigger words that we're encountering now from third grade on up to eighth grade. And it also gives a support that your students need to get into that nuanced reading, right? The tone, the pronunciation, some different accents, perhaps, right? They're encountering these new vocabulary words and new context in their reading beyond just those basic learn to read books. And now we're reading to learn. I love using these two things in conjunction. Here's how. We get the physical book, and they pop in the audio book and they're reading along on the page while they're listening to the words. This is also fantastic if you're ever homeschooling from the road. We tend to homeschool year round and that means taking some of our books with us when we go on vacation. Um, and this is a great thing. You know, you've got the audio book on a phone or a device and you've got the physical book that is easy to take with them. Um, I usually pair this with book studies and it's a great kind of all-in-one language arts if abbreviated for a small uh, chunk of time. Next up are Nearpod and Flocabulary. Ooh, you guys, you know I love me some Nearpod. Um, let's go ahead and dive into that one first. So Nearpod lets you create interactive lessons or just choose from the thousands of pre-made lessons that are already in the lesson library. The free version is fantastic for homeschoolers. Here are a few options of things that you can do with a free Nearpod account. Now, these lessons include VR field trips, quizzes, interactive games, and video lessons with questions embedded into them. That's fantastic for the kids who really want to learn these more complex topics from somebody else. I've got tweens. I know what this is like. Um, but you want to also be in touch with what they're learning, right? You're able to check on those quiz results and check to make sure that they're understanding what they're learning. I also mentioned Flocabulary. Flocabulary is not free, but here's why I think a subscription is worth it. Flocabulary has these skill videos and they are across the board, all the subjects, okay? So of course we're talking about ELA today, but I'm just saying that this is kind of a worthy investment when you're thinking about all the other areas you could use it for. So 
You start with these skill videos. Then there are six practice opportunities, including quizzes, um, trimming video clips in order to show the definition of a word, as well as a few other games. There's one called Lyric Lab, which I actually really love for this age group in particular. They've got a little bit more facility with the language. And so they're able to then rhyme words, build out raps, and then put a beat behind it. And using the little hints and helps and scaffolding that are included in vocabulary, they're really able to do some cool things. It's a really great way to get kids beyond the workbook page and really using that new vocabulary. In some, Nearpod and vocabulary are great tools to help make ELA learning a little bit more interactive and dynamic for your kids. Third on my list is Google Docs. Think back to a time when you were in this age range and you had a language arts teacher come over your shoulder and help you start editing a paper. Okay, maybe they squatted down next to your desk, but there they are. They've got coffee breath. They're in your space, right? This is what we're trying to avoid. I can picture that so vividly. I hope you are too. But the idea here is that we're going to avoid that by also giving this really personalized, down to the detail a feedback that we need during ELA instruction. This is perfect for assignments, collaborative work. Um, and also just those longer writing pieces. In our homeschool, I actually have my kids write a lot of their language arts responses in a Google Doc, and then I can come back, hop on my computer, they're on the kid computer, we just have one, on the other side of the table, and we're looking at the same document. Then I'm able to highlight a word and say, hey, this looks like it's missing something. What is it missing? Let's say it's a possessive noun, and so it's missing the apostrophe. I can highlight that and say, who does this backpack belong to? Oh, it belongs to Sarah. Sarah apostrophe S. Perfect. Let's move on. So I can do that. Another way that we use this is leaving comments. So I'll ask a question. I'll highlight certain things in their unit studies or in their writing for them to come back to. Google Docs is a fantastic tool for keeping things organized in your homeschool family, especially if you have multiple kids and giving kids the precise feedback they need without the kind of anxiety inducing closeness that might come from squatting down or working side by side. Fourth, we have Common Lit. This is a free digital library filled with leveled reading passages, comprehension activities, and quizzes. This is really great for building those critical thinking skills that are so important during this period. Like I mentioned before, we're no longer learning to read, we're reading to learn. We're also not at that high stakes phase where they're in high school and we're trying to get ready for the SAT or ACT or some other big test where we can just really focus on the idea of thinking, asking questions, really reading for understanding during this period. I love being able to integrate this content into our other subjects. A lot of times we'll touch on a topic in science or social studies, and then I'll be looking for ways to kind of bring in ELA, reading comprehension, focus during that time. Common Lit is a fantastic way to do that. Like I said, it's free. It's a really easy one to bring in when you need it. Finally, fifth on my list is self-paced or live classes on platforms like india.com or OutSchool. Remember that time we talked about outsourcing? Guys, this is your jam for finding classes that meet the needs that you're just either not able to meet or you don't have the time to meet at the moment. These classes are taught by experienced educators who also understand the unique needs of homeschooled students. Disclaimer, I also teach self-paced classes and one of them is an asynchronous writing course. Let me break it down and show you how this can work. This course is called Write On. It's got personalized feedback with real world topics for young writers. And so at the beginning of the week, I'm going to provide an article for the student to read that's on their reading level. Then I'm also going to send a video of me explaining the article and answering, anticipating any questions that might come up and giving the assignment. Then my student is going to turn in their Google Doc, again, Google Docs, uh, with their first draft of their essay or composition, whatever comes out of that first article. And then I'm going to edit that by leaving suggestions and comments in the Google Doc. I'll also respond with another video, giving comments, giving feedback on their writing. Then they're gonna go back and edit their piece and turn it back in. All of this is done on Google Classroom 
And again, it's a weekly course. So you're paying one amount for however many interactions there. And we're working on personalized skills. They're getting the feedback that they would get in a live class, right? But at the flexible pace of an asynchronous course. Again, getting things to work with your schedule and your child's needs are going to be really key here. So check out the description. I've got some discounts for you and coupons to use on both of these platforms, OutSchool and India.com. All right, guys, these are my top five ELA tools for upper elementary and middle schoolers. Whether you're looking for self-paced courses, interactive practice opportunities, or just ways to keep your students reading, then we've got you covered here. Which ones are you excited to try? Let us know in the comments. And I would love to hear if you've got any more to add to this list. Also, don't forget to subscribe, like, and turn on notifications for this channel. And thank you again to today's video sponsor, beeducation.com. If you're interested in Korean language classes and some other tutoring opportunities, check out their link in the description below. Guys, if nobody's told you yet today, thank you. Thank you for doing what you're doing. It's really important. Happy teaching. Thank you.